Hello creators. Starting soon, I'm going to include guest speakers on the show. So if you're someone who works in the performing arts or the creative industry and you want to collaborate with me, then please send an email to sleeplesscreativespod at gmail.com. Introduce yourself and tell me a little bit about what it is that you do, and I'll get back to you with more information. Hello creators and welcome back. Now, most of you may know that February marks the start of Black History Month. Black History Month began in 1915, half a century after slavery was abolished in the US. The theme for 2022 is Black Health and Wellness, which explores the activities, rituals and initiatives that black communities have done in order to be well. Today, I'm going to be reading a selection of poetry by Francis E. W. Harper. Born in 1825 in Baltimore, USA, to free African-American parents, not only was Francis a poet, a writer, and a lecturer, but she was also the first African-American woman to publish a short story, and she was also a very influential suffragist, reformer, and abolitionist for the American Anti-Slavery Society, and a founder of the National Association of Coloured Women Clubs, alongside Harriet Tubman. So, take a moment to get cosy and comfortable, and drift off. My mother's kiss. My mother's kiss. My mother's kiss. I feel it's impressed now. As in the bright and happy days, she pressed it on my brow. You say it is a fancied thing within my memory fraught. To me, it has a sacred place, the treasure house of thought. Again, I feel her fingers glide amid my clustering hair. I see the love light in her eyes when all my life was fair. Again, I hear her gentle voice in warning or in love. How precious was the faith that taught my soul of things above. The music of her voice is stilled. Her lips are paled in death. As precious pearls, I'll clasp her words until my latest breath. The world has scattered round my path, honour and wealth and fame, but naught so precious as the thoughts that gather round her name. And friends have placed upon my brow the laurels of renown, but she first taught me how to wear my manhood as a crown. My hair is silvered o'er with age, I'm longing to depart, to clasp again my mother's hand and be a child at heart. To roam with her the glory land where saints and angels greet, to cast our crowns with songs of love at our Redeemer's feet. grain of sand. Do you see this grain of sand lying loosely in my hand? Do you know to me it brought just a simple loving thought? When one gazes night by night on the glorious stars of light, 
Oh, how little seems the span measured round the life of man. Oh, how fleeting are his years, with their smiles and their tears. Can it be that God does care for such atoms as we are? Then out spake this grain of sand. I was fashioned by his hand. In the starlit realms of space, I was made to have a place. Should the ocean flood the world, where its mountains gainst me hurled, all the force they could employ, wouldn't a single grain destroy? And if I, a thing so light, have a place within his sight, you are linked unto his throne, cannot live nor die alone. The Dying Bondman Life was trembling, faintly trembling on the bondman's latest breath, and he felt the chilling pressure of the cold, hard hand of death. He had been an Afric chieftain, worn his manhood as a crown, but upon the field of battle had been fiercely stricken down. He had longed to gain his freedom, waited, watched, and hoped in vain till his life was slowly ebbing, almost broken was his chain. By his bedside stood the master, gazing on the dying one, knowing by the dull grey shadows that life's sands were almost run. Master, said the dying bondman, home and friends I soon shall see. But before I reach my country, master, write that I am free. For the spirits of my fathers would shrink back from me in pride. If I told them at our greeting, I, a slave, had lived and died. Give to me the precious token, that my kindred dead may see. Master, write it, write it quickly. Master, write that I am free. At his earliest plea, the master wrote for him the glad release. O'er his wan and wasted features, flitted one sweet smile of peace. Eagerly he grasped the writing. I am free, at last, he said. Backward fell upon the pillow. He was free among the dead. Songs for the People Let me make the songs for the people, songs for the old and young, songs to stir like a battle cry, wherever they are sung. Not for the clashing of sabres, for carnage, nor for strife, but songs to thrill the hearts of men with more abundant life. Let me make the songs for the weary, amid life's fever and threat, till hearts shall relax their tension and careworn brows forget. Let me sing for little children before their footsteps stray, sweet anthems of love and duty to float o'er life's highway. I would sing for the poor and aged when shadows dim their sight of the bright and restful mansions where there shall be no night. Our world, so worn and weary, needs music pure and strong to hush the jangle and discords of sorrow, pain and wrong. Music to soothe all its sorrow till war and crime shall cease and the hearts of men grow tender, girdle the world with peace.